Welcome back everyone. Today I will recap a 2022 Thai horror comedy film named Haunted University's Second Semester. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, three students of the university enter a storeroom. There they find a cloth with the number 37 written on it and they take it with them. But the door closes automatically as soon as they come out. We then see a girl named Tai, to whom Faye gives the application form for the cheerleading team, and asks her to fill it out and give it to the seniors. Here she also meets Faye's friend Shin. Now Tai is taking cheerleading tips from Faye when suddenly Shin sees a girl there, and Tai tells them that she is her friend Mesa. Tai introduces Mesa to both of them, after which Faye and Shin go to click photos. Actually, this place was Tai and Mesa's secret place, but Tai had also called Faye and Shin there, and Mesa didn't seem happy about it. Now all of them are going towards the common room to meet the seniors when Mesa's attention goes towards a room, and when she goes in front of that room, the book falls from her hand. Seeing this, Tai asks them to go ahead and she will catch them up later. Tai pulls Mesa out of the room and asks her why she went inside. To which Mesa says that she did not realize. Only then something moves inside but Tai blocks her vision and tells her that they have to act normal. Mesa sees someone walking and says she is scared. To which Tai says she will have her back if anything happens. Later in the common room, Tai notices that Mesa is trembling with fear, so she asks her to just ignore if she sees anything. Senior Nuts then welcomes them to their fraternity night and introduces them to Cho, their captain this year. Cho tells them that their first activity is to practice their school anthem together. Their ex-senior Ming will also be observing them today. They then begin the practice, but soon everyone notices that Mesa is out of sync, and Faye says she was chanting something else. Now when they start again, Mesa's attention goes towards a room and the lights start flickering there. Ming tells them to stop, after which Mesa screams seeing a ghost there, which scares all the students. Tai brings her out into the open air, where Mesa tells her that it's happening again, to which she says they have been through this before. Meanwhile, Shin tells Faye that they say Mesa can see ghosts. On the other hand, we see seniors lighting incense sticks and discuss if Mesa really saw something. Only then do they hear Ming yelling at Cho and Nutch telling them to talk to Mesa. Here Mesa says she thinks she should leave, as she is bound to ruin the practice again, to which Tai says she will go talk to the senior and find her a jacket. Now when she returns to the common room, Faye asks her what's wrong with Mesa, and Shin says everyone is talking and that she can see ghosts. Tai asks them if she really can see ghosts, they will stop being her friends, to which they say nothing. Tai then borrows a jacket from a girl, and then she leaves there. Match tells Ming that Mesa wants to go home, but he refuses. Here Mesa asks Tai what do they tell her. However, she gets terrified seeing that it's a ghost and not Tai, but only then Tai comes there, and Mesa asks her if could she just run away. Tai gives her the jacket, and then Nutch comes there. They then return to the common room, where all the students are looking at her strangely. Cho tells her that he knows she is not feeling well, but the show must go on. Ming then asks her what's her problem, but she doesn't say anything. Ming gets annoyed by this and yells at her. Only then she sees a ghost there and says there is a ghost right in front of him. Hearing this, Ming tries to make fun of her, and says if just one of them admits they can see ghosts, he will let them all go home. But no one raises their hand. He then asks Tai if she can see ghosts, and even she says no. Just then Mesa hears the school anthem and sees that the students are not singing it. But only then does she see that many ghosts are sitting upside down on the room ceiling singing the anthem. She gets terrified seeing this and vomits on Faye, and Faye says they both should leave and they can continue without these two. Mesa then runs away from there, and Tai goes after her, and we see a ghost following Mesa. Tai enters a room to find Mesa, and hears someone crying there, and when she turns, she finds a girl's ghost standing there, but she ignores her and leaves there. She then finds her on the roof and asks her what she is doing here. But Mesa asks her why didn't she tell him that she can see ghosts. Tai says because she doesn't want to look like a freak like her. She is also scared of the ghosts, but she forces herself to ignore them, so why can't she do the same? Mesa says she tried, but she couldn't do it, because she is not like her. Tai says she always had her back, and did everything she could until she has nothing left. She wants to hang out with friends and travel as everyone does, and now she is tired. Mesa says she is the only friend she has, to which Tai says she will never leave her alone in this world. She asks her to come down, but suddenly a ghost falls between them, and when Tai tries to ignore her, Mesa says when she treated her like she treated the ghosts, it hurt her more than when she saw those ghosts. So from now on, when she sees her, don't ignore her as she ignores them. She then commits suicide by jumping from the roof, and here we see the same cloth with 37 written on it which we saw at the start of the movie. Now all the students get shocked and terrified due to this incident because somewhere they were also responsible for Mesa's death. 
When Ty realizes that she's lost her best friend, Mace's ghost appears in front of her, and apart from apologizing to her, she could not say anything else. Now after completing her graduation, Ty comes to the terrace of the university in memory of Mesa, and we see them reading a book together. At the beginning of the second story, we see a fresher named Tan, who finds an audio file on his laptop. In it, it is told that the real owner of Betsy may return like he did every year. He was a first-year med student like them. One night he came back, and no one dared to stay in the dorm, even the security guards. He got run over by a car on the night of the 30th anniversary of the college's founding. They say he still wanted to continue his studies, so every year on the anniversary night, he would come back to the dorm and walk into the room with Betsy. He gets terrified hearing this, and only then he notices someone getting up on the bed, but it turns out to be a roommate. However, when he leaves there, we find that his bed number is C. He then meets his girlfriend Tang, who had sent that audio file to him. She says ghost stories will help him to stay awake, to which he says he is not scared at all. The next day, we see that it's the 70th anniversary of their college, and they declare an oath of ethical behavior and commitment to the medical profession. After that, when he goes to his room, his roommate tells him that he is going home, and before leaving, he asks him to watch his back. Now when Tan is studying at night, we come to know that he is suffering from epilepsy and he starts having seizures. To control himself, he starts hitting the bed, due to which his badge falls down, and when he tries to find it, suddenly someone knocks on his door. Tang has come to study in his room, and she starts reading her book out loud. Tan asks her to be quiet as he wants to study in peace. She asks him if he has anything to tell her, to which he say he just wants to be alone. Tang reminds him that he said he wanted to be a doctor so he could look after her. And hearing this, Tan hugs and apologizes to her. Late at night, we see the lights of the college flickering, and Tan wakes up hearing a scream. He sees that Tan is not in the room so he calls her, but she does not pick up his call. Now when he goes out to find her, he sees a flickering light there, which begins triggering his epilepsy, but he ignores it and moves on. He then sees a water bottle fall out of the fridge and feels that Tang is messing with him. He steps forward fearfully and shuts the fridge door. Now because he was very scared, he starts packing his things to go home, and only then he remembers that his badge has fallen under the bed. But he also finds an old badge there and remembers that it slipped out from under its leg when he hit the bed. He then listens to the audio, that says if he doesn't want him to come, write no bed see here on a piece of paper and put it outside the door. But no one knows if the trick is foolproof. He then tries to call Tang, but she texts him that she is home and no need to call. Now when he leaves for his house, all the lights in the hallway start flickering, causing him to have an epileptic fit. He goes back to his room and falls on his bed and faints. Late that night when he wakes up, he finds that half of his body is paralyzed and because of this he could not get up from the bed. The lights in the room then go off and he hears a car crash outside. A shadow then appears on his window which suddenly disappears and then he sees that someone has torn that note. He then gets terrified seeing a ghost entering his room and moving towards him and it pulls him down from the bed. Tan then sees that ghost climbing on the bed and he tries to get out of the room. The ghost sees that his badge is lying there broken, which makes him very angry, and he begins chasing Tan. Tan tries to escape from there but the ghost hears his voice and goes after him and throws him down the stairs, injuring Tan badly. The ghost then tries to kill him by strangling him, but only then Tan sees his badge lying there and he remembers those moments when he took the oath of ethical behavior and commitment to the medical profession. He begins saying that oath, and hearing this, ghost leaves him and disappears from there. Tan then crawls out of the building and calls Tang. He tells her that he has epilepsy and he doesn't think he can become a doctor. Meanwhile, we see the ghost sitting on his bed looking at his badge, and then he disappears. Tang tells Tan that he doesn't have to be a doctor, and she still wants him to look after her. The third story, The Abandoned, begins, and we see a girl walking down an old corridor. She hears some sound from behind her, but when she turns back, there is no one there and that sound also stops. She then sees a board with the Faculty of Science written on it. Only then she notices a garland under her feet, and suddenly someone takes it away. A ghost then grabs her hair and takes her away with her, and then the garland falls there. After this, we see Mean telling this story to her friends May and Joy, and she says that whoever disrespects that board, especially at night, will pay a dear price. Mean then calls her brother Golf and tells him that she needs her laptop now. She asks him where he is now, to which he says he is right in front of some sign. Now he comes to the same gallery while texting with his crush, and he also sees the same board in front of him. But he ignores it and starts leaving from there, and before his foot hits that garland, he changes his path. Meanwhile, Mean continues the story and tells them that there is a glass cabinet on the ground floor of the old science building, with the graduation gown inside. It's a tribute to one of the students. She was very poor and got bullied all the time, so she studied hard, hoping to graduate in four years. But in the end, she failed. Distraught that she couldn't achieve her goal, 
On graduation day, she put on the gown and committed suicide by jumping from the roof. On the eve of every graduation day since, at least one student died an unnatural death at that building. Here Golf mistakenly enters the old building, and he reaches the same glass cabin about which Mean was telling. He then leaves there saying why they even display this crappy gown, and we see that gown moving. Now when he moves forward in the hallway, he suddenly falls down. Mean says a student once challenged the ghosts there, and the next day he was found dead, with his guts all over the floor. She then tells them about a professor who was having a recurrent heart attack, too bad she couldn't find her medicine bottle, so she died. On the other hand, Golf gets up saying who left a medicine bottle on the floor, and when he is about to leave, a door opens and a hand comes out asking for her medicine. Golf thinks that she is the professor and is about to give her her bottle of medicine when he hears a sound from behind and sees a silhouette of a woman stabbing herself. He feels that she is having a heart attack, so he moves forward toward her, but the professor asks him to stop. Now Golf gets terrified and he was about to turn when he gets a text on his phone, and he gets overjoyed seeing that it is the text from his crush. Only then does the professor's ghost tell him to give back her medicine, but he asks her to be kind saying that the other lady is dying right there. He then goes to that poor girl's ghost and asks her if it's her medicine. He then gets a call from Mean who asks him what's taking him so long. Golf says he is already at the science building right in front of the faculty office. Mean tells him that he is at the wrong building and disconnects the call. He then tells the ghost that he has to go now, but he will take her to the hospital after returning his sister's laptop. He then takes her along to the new building and tells her that he admires her spirit and that she is sick but she still put on the gown to take photos. He says he used to take graduation day photos for a small fee and asks her if would she hire him. Suddenly she vomits a lot of blood and he starts looking for her medicine in the bag, but then Mean comes there and asks him what took him so long. She says he went to the old building and asks him to be careful or the ghosts will break his neck. Golf says he explored the entire building but found not a single ghost there. Only a professor and a senior taking her graduation photos. Mean leaves there thinking he is high and Golf finds that the poor girl is gone. Here Joy and May see that ghost in their lab standing in a corner. They both approach her and May asks her if she needs help. The ghost then turns and they both try to flee. But then Mean comes there and they show her the ghost, and only then does the professor's ghost ask them for her medicine. They all get terrified seeing this, and Mean calls and asks Golf if the medicine bottle is with him. He says it's in her laptop bag, to which she says it's not, and asks him to find it right now. Golf again goes back to the corridor and finds the bottle lying there, and this time as he crushes the garland, the ghost appears in front of him and he runs back from there in horror. He calls Mean and tells her that there is a ghost at the walkway. The medicine bottle is there, but he can't get past her. Mean tells him that the ironwood ghost is not always at the sign, so he can do it and she believes in him. Golf then goes back there and as he picks up that bottle, his phone rings. He thinks that it's Mean's call and asks her to stop calling him, but he finds that it was his crush's call. He tries to call her back but could not connect, so he begins crying, and then the ghost comes there and tries to take him away, but he manages to free himself and flee without the medicine. He then calls Mean and tells her that the ghost just got him and he can't do it. Mean says he failed again and asks him to run, and she will deal with everything here. The trio then manages to get out of the room, but the professor's ghost comes there too and starts moving towards them. From the other side, the poor girl's ghost also starts moving toward them. We then see Golf goes to face the ghost and says this time he won't fail, and when Ghost tries to catch him, the helmet comes in her hand and Golf leaves from there with the medicine bottle. He then reaches the hallway and throws the medicine bottle toward the professor and as she gets her medicine, she disappears from there. But only then do they see that the poor girl's ghost is strangling Mean, and she says that if she doesn't graduate, no one will. Golf gets an idea and he clicks her photo. He tells her that everybody tells him that this faculty is so hard to graduate from. He wouldn't make it past the first semester, but she has come this far and he is really proud of her. He congrats her saying that she has graduated, and then he clicks her pick with the trio. Later, Mean explains to him that dropping out doesn't mean his life is over. There is plenty of opportunities out there. Golf asks her to go to her lab and he is going home. She clicks a photo with him, and then he receives an edited photo from her, due to which he gets overjoyed and the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.